All right, that's what I'm doing. I'm double clicking the button and uh, I turn it off on the second click. <laughs> hey, just got done doing a little treasure hunting and uh, did all right, I guess. Hit a spot, Lowell Park. It's a little park in outside of Dixon, Illinois here, down the road from where I live. And uh, Ronald Reagan used to be a lifeguard there on the Rock River. And uh, there's a couple little spots around there where I like to go to swing in my detector and found like four wheat pennies. Didn't find much along the riverbank there. It was pretty nasty. A couple of lead sinkers. But anyhow, down here by the Dixon Dam on the Rock River. Yeah, I got my laptop. There more. <laughs> See, it's a nice nice place. I do a lot of treasure hunting right up here along the river too. Done really well. Along the river, rivers are really good spots for treasure hunting because you can only go so far and <laughs> unless you can walk on water, <laughs> you pretty much stopped at the river edge and a lot of stuff gets lost right up there. It's like a big old coin purse. <laughs> yeah. But anyhow, I had a <clears throat> passage of scripture I was going to read and give you a little, a little bit of encouragement. <clears throat> Try not to keep you too long. But, uh, I don't know, I got First Peter, chapter 5, verses uh, 15 through 19, or actually 16 through 19. And I'm going to read that right quick and do a little expounding on that. At least how it speaks to me, maybe it'll speak to you in the same way, by the Spirit of the living God. Alright, it says, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of what shall what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the right, righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore <clears throat> let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well doing as unto a faithful creator and yes you know what signs are everywhere you know these are the last moments of time I really believe that before the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ of Nazareth and uh, it says the judgment must begin at the house of God you know he's uh, doesn't take it lightly those who profess his name to misrepresent him <laughs> he doesn't look on it lightly and uh, it's a serious and a grave matter to profess to be a child of the king a child of the father and uh, he doesn't look upon it lightly if we misrepresent him through our activities and our actions so Try to be sober, try to be just, try to be righteous, try to be fair, and try not to uh, allow any appearance of evil <laughs> to uh, be associated with us. That's that's my uh, that's what I try to live by. Like I say, I'm preaching to me, brothers and sisters, <laughs> because uh, I fall short of the glory of God daily, continually, and uh, just pray that I remain humble and quick and zealous to repent when I blow it. And uh, <clears throat> another passage in that uh, here is in verse 19. It talks about responsibility, sure does to me. And just like I say, it's I've quoted it several times and you know, working out your own salvation is your responsibility. It's our responsibility to work out this salvation. It's not the pastors, it's not the any man or woman of God that's anointed to come in and do it for us. And it doesn't work that way. It's our responsibility if we're to get along with the Father and get in His presence and allow His Spirit to reveal things in our souls that need to be dealt with. And it's our responsibility to uh, humble ourselves and allow that Holy Spirit to uh, do what only He can do, what no man or woman can do. Uh, it's a supernatural healing and deliverance within our souls. and. Uh, Got to do that. It's a one-on-one -on -one thing. And, but it says, Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls. Commit the keeping of their souls. That's 
speaks loud and clear to me. That's res my responsibility. I got to be committed to the keeping of my soul before the Lord my God. And, uh, amen. And I just pray that, that this word would challenge you to do that. To get serious with the Lord and uh, to lay aside all those sins and the things and the cares of this life and this world that might be distracting you, that might be diverting your attention away from your primary objective and your primary purpose, which is to glorify God, which is to serve Him, which is to uh, yield your souls to Him and uh, <clears throat> allow Him to fill you with His Spirit so He can take the talents and the gifts that He's given you. So those things can be manifest in you and bring glory to the Father and the Son by His Spirit. So, uh, yeah, there goes a kid on a bike. It's a nice little bike path here, too. So that's all I got. I'm not going to keep you too long. Uh, it's a beautiful little spot. Like I say, I like to come down here with my metal detector and dig up silver. <laughs> 1800s coins, uh, you know, stuff, artifacts, relics, I don't care. I, like I say, I'm not a not selling any of this stuff. I just like to keep it. It's neat historical stuff, and it's a good hobby. Gets get you uh, gets me keeps me active, mobile, limber, and agile <laughs> for a 51 year old as I can be. And uh, I just do a little panorama. That's the Dixon Power hydroelectric plant behind me over there. <coughs> hey, there I am too. <coughs> Anyhow, God bless you. Uh, thank you for all your encouragement that's been extended to me, and I just hope I can uh, graciously return the favor, and that you'll find whatever comes out of this peculiar vessel a blessing. And uh, that's just me being me and <clears throat> trying to bow myself, my soul before the Lord my God, and just say, here I am, Lord, use me. <laughs> Send me, Lord. Send me to... Uh, the people within the sphere of my influence because we've all got a, a sphere of influence people we work with our family members uh, our neighbors and uh, love on them love on them because Christ is coming and they need to know him not just in their heads but in their spirit and their spirits need to be regenerated through the birth birthing process John 3 3 Jesus said verily verily Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. <clears throat> so they need to be born again. They need to be filled continually with His Spirit. And uh, just pray that you'd be reaching out to those folks and uh, get them there. Get them there. All right, man. Women, brothers, sisters, the beloved in Christ. Love you. I'm going to let you go. Got to get home and upload some stuff. And... Uh, See what else you guys are doing tonight. Maybe you guys got a word of encouragement or exhortation or admonition or whatever it is for me. God bless you. Love you. In Jesus' name, bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's all. See ya.